Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When the F-35B Lightning II fifth generation stealth fighter was revealed to the world, most of us realized what a leap in technology this aircraft represented. Its shaft-driven lift fan system was a key component, especially its powerful pivoting engine nozzle. How did Lockheed Martin manage to build this aircraft? In addition to its stealth capabilities, the F-35B is the first fighter jet in history to be outfitted with a helmet-mounted display. The HMD lets pilots see through the aircraft, thanks to its distributed aperture system cameras. Constructed at Fort Worth, Texas, the F-35B Lightning II, developed by Lockheed Martin, began production in 2006. It's a short takeoff and vertical landing variant, powered by Pratt & Whitney's F-135 engine. The airframe comprises highly complicated stealth technology, contributing to enhanced multi-role capabilities. In 2015, it was commissioned into the United States Marine Corps. Another feature that makes the F-35B a force to be reckoned with is its engine. Pratt & Whitney created the F-135 engine that powers this aircraft. It generates 40,000 pounds of thrust and has unrivaled performance and dependability. It also uses this single engine control system for better management. One engine provides fewer complications than two. This technologically advanced engine aids the F-35B's short takeoff vertical landing operation by employing a one-of-a-kind propulsion system. This incorporates a lift fan a drive shaft, and a swivel module that allows for vertical thrust. Combined with its power and low observable qualities, it continues to highlight the F-35B's distinguishing fifth generation capabilities. Rolls-Royce created the lift fan system of the F-35B, which features a vertically oriented two-stage counter-rotating fan controlled by a clutch from the primary F-135 engine via a drive shaft. The clutch engages during STOVL operations, directing the thrust from the main engine to the lift fan, producing up to 20,000 pounds of downward push. At the same time, the back nozzle swivels downward, adding another 18,000 pounds of thrust. The lift fan and engine installation are critical to the F-35B's STOVL capability, providing a one-of-a-kind engineering and air power solution previously occupied with aircraft like the AV-8B Harrier II. We've had a great opportunity to witness an engine removal and installation, a lift fan removal and a power module change amongst many weapon loading events. Doing these major engineering events on land is significantly easier, I would argue, than doing them at sea. 
in which we're in a dynamic environment, the noise, uh, the movement of the ship, etc. So that brings its own challenges. Testing an aircraft like the F-35B requires many different tests, such as climatic testing. The F-35B was subjected to rigorous climatic testing at Eglin Air Force Base's McKinley Climatic Laboratory, which included a wide spectrum of harsh weather conditions. The experiments, which were completed in 2015, subjected it to temperature variations ranging from negative 140 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, rain, extreme humidity, ice, snow, and wind. The testing included engine runs, weapon bay door cycling, and ground maneuvers, which allowed engineers to assess the aircraft's performance in various settings. These tests validated the F-35B's endurance, readiness, and capability to operate efficiently in a variety of climatic conditions, in accordance with global operating requirements. In the chamber here, we have the ability to completely control the environment that we're going to sub that we subjected the F-35 to. Kinley Lab, they have seen virtually every aircraft in the Western world for decades, for the last number of 40 years or so. The F-35 is different. And to prop an airplane up on a stand 12 feet in the air so that it could hover or take off vertically or fly with full afterburner is something that no one had conceived of or seen previous to the F-35 coming through. Once the F-35B had been tested under all possible conditions, it was declared operational. Short takeoff and vertical landing characteristics of the F-35B are a distinct military advantage provided by modern engineering. During a short runway takeoff, the rear nozzle of the engine angulates downward, which is activated by the engine via a clutch generates vertical lift. In vertical landing mode, the aircraft decelerates to a hover, utilizing thrust from the downward deflecting rear nozzle and the lift fan, allowing it to land in tight quarters. This advanced propulsion system allows the F-35B to operate from short runways, remote facilities, and air-capable ships boosting mission diversity and strategic flexibility. On Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers of the Royal Navy, a ski jump is used for takeoff support. For STOVL F-35B operations, these carriers employ a simple ski jump configuration. The aircraft takes off from the carrier's deck using forward propulsion and the upward curve of the ski jump, allowing for a short runway length. The ski jump allows for a safe takeoff while increasing the weight and fuel carrying capacity of the aircraft. Because of the ski jump for launch and vertical landing, Aircraft carriers can undertake robust air operations even in the absence of traditional catapults and arresting gear. In the Royal Navy, F-35Bs are more likely to perform rolling landings, but the lift fan system is still used during these. Although landing an F-35B is simpler than landing the old Harrier II, it still requires quality training. U.S. Marine Corps pilots receive rigorous F-35B training at training areas such as MCAS Yuma, including vertical landings on ground-marked amphibious assault ship decks.
This entails learning to hover using the aircraft's short takeoff and vertical landing capabilities. Trainees work on accurate throttle control and strict coordination of forward and vertical thrust. To mimic actual stringent flying patterns, typically at night or in bad visibility conditions, are implemented. Thorough training guarantees that pilots can land on amphibious assault ships safely and correctly, which is critical for efficient carrier-based operations. Lockheed Martin's F-35B was developed to replace the aging AV-8B Harrier II. The AV-8B Harrier II is a second-generation vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft developed by McDonnell Douglas and British Aerospace. Its prototype took to the skies in 1978 with a larger composite wing increased fuel capacity and improved aerodynamics, the airframe improves on the original Harrier GR1 design. The engine, a Rolls-Royce Pegasus, produces nearly 23,000 pounds of thrust. The Harrier II, commissioned into the USMC in 1985, quickly became a capable multi-role platform in various combat scenarios serving as a forerunner to the F-35B. A vertical landing in an AV-8B Harrier II requires both piloting expertise and intricate engineering. As the Harrier II approaches the landing zone, the pilot slows down, shifting from wingborne to jetborne flight. The pilot guides engine thrust downwards by manipulating the aircraft's thrust vectoring nozzles, stabilizing the aircraft in a hover over the landing area. Maintaining a constant hover involves precision in throttle and flight control adjustments, as well as the ability to compensate for wind variances and drift. The AV-8B's landing gear absorbs the impact of the descent and the aircraft rests on the deck, making a faultless vertical touchdown. It demonstrates the AV-8B's previously unique VSTOL capability, which is critical for use on ships other than carriers. Typically, crew members from the Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron are hard at work on board amphibious assault ships. Their day's work could involve meticulously assembling lanyards for the heat shields that protect their squad's AV-8B Harrier II engines from severe thermal conditions. At the same time, a team of experts performed electrical repairs on the aircraft's wing panels, which is critical for optimal flying surface functionality. Concurrently, corrosion management measures are employed, with the jam nuts of the Harrier II's bomb rack receiving special attention. Only with constant maintenance can these aircraft remain in top condition, capable of carrying out their air support missions. Thrust vectoring, as found in the AV-8B and F-35B, can also be found in the rockets used by space agencies like NASA. Engineers have completed the tasks on NASA's new Space Launch System rockets, Core Stage. Operators completed a test of the stage's thrust vector control system on NASA's Stennis Space Center's historic B-2 test stand near Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. The test validated the control system and its associated hydraulics. This was done by gimballing the stage's four RS-25 engines in the same way they must move during flight to guide the rocket and maintain a suitable trajectory. Thrust vectoring is used by the Space Launch System's four RS-25 engines. The direction of exhaust flow is skewed in these engines due to gimballing or pivoting, resulting in offset thrust. 
This offset produces a rotating torque, which allows for orientation and trajectory modifications during flight, which is critical for course correction and overall rocket maneuverability. SpaceX's vertical landing Falcon rockets have changed rocketry, owing mostly to the active use of vectors, gravity, and thrust vector control. To begin, as the rocket's second stage launches the payload into orbit, the now separate first stage performs a flip maneuver, redirecting its course back to Earth. This maneuver is carried out by utilizing cold gas thrusters, which are miniature engines that provide the necessary thrust for the course adjustment. The rocket uses a portion of its engines to essentially halt its descent, swinging its trajectory back towards the launch site or drone ship during the boost back burn. The rocket's velocity is reduced further during the re-entry burn, reducing atmospheric re-entry stresses. The rocket begins its hover slam or suicide burn at this point. Earth's gravity is counteracted by directing the rocket engines toward the ground and executing thrust vectoring, allowing for controlled descent. At the final second, the landing legs deploy and the engines throttle to zero velocity, allowing for a vertical touchdown. The F-35B Lightning II, a stealthy multi-role STOVL fighter plane, combines cutting-edge technologies into an advanced warfighting machine. The F-35B's exceptional STOVL capabilities are largely due to a novel propulsion system developed by Rolls-Royce, which combines a lift fan with a swivel module, allowing vertical thrust. The Lockheed F-35B is meant to replace the AV-8B Harrier II, both of which are VSTOL capable. Thrust vectoring, a characteristic now shared by the SLS Space Rocket and SpaceX's Falcon rockets, allows for course changes while in flight, demonstrating the advancement of aerospace technology. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.